Hi everyone, it's Andrew here and I'm actually back in my family home where I grew up as a child in Western Queensland, Australia. It's very nice to be home. I haven't been here for like three years seeing everybody now and I'm going to try to keep some videos coming out even though my internet is terrible. So let's see how this goes. If, if this is a few days late, it's because I'm uploading it and it's taking forever. But today I'm going to go through all the 13 apps that have just been released for Q1 2022. Let's just jump straight in. Okay, the first one I'm going to look at today is uh, Pershing Square. So that's Bill Ackman. And well, the, the news here was that back in Q1, he actually already he actually announced that he had invested um, a big stake here. It looks like 7% of their, the firm's portfolio in Netflix. But since that quarter is over, he's actually come out and said that he sold his stake in Netflix. So look, I actually haven't been following this one very closely. I know other people um, like Hamish Hodder, uh, investing with Tom, I know those guys have looked into this a little bit more closely than me, so I'm not really sure why why Bill Ackman sold his Netflix stake, but anyway, there it is. It's been bought and apparently it's already been sold. So next I thought I'd look at Warren Buffett at Berkshire Hathaway, and it's been already highly reported what he's done here because this was announced earlier than a lot of the others, but we've got Chevron, Occidental Petroleum, and I think the interesting one is Activision Blizzard. I don't really know much about the oil play that he's going for there. There's obviously, he sees a lot of, um, there's obviously some value there in those in those oil companies, but uh, Activision Blizzard is something I do understand. Uh, this has been explained by Warren as essentially a arbitrage play between the current price of the Activision Blizzard stock and the price that Microsoft wants to purchase the company for. That deal goes through, is essentially between the price it is now and that price is 20%. So he's betting that the deal will go through and he'll make an easy an easy 20% on that investment. Probably not a bad idea. Uh, and if it doesn't work, Activision Blizzard is a reasonably good company anyway. Uh, and I think they already had invested in Activision Blizzard in a small amount already. So, so next up is Pat Dorsey at Dorsey Asset Management. And Something to note here is that they've got a new purchase here of Roku Inc. Now, I don't know what Roku Inc. does, and I, I got a feeling it's a streaming service. Like, I don't know whether it's like Netflix or not, but it's definitely something to do with that. And obviously, Pat Dorsey sees some value there. He, he's familiar with these types of companies with Walt Disney, so um, he obviously knows the streaming space a little bit. And look, this is very interesting. I'll have to put this on to... Um, onto my watch list to keep an eye on it and to also do some work in it myself because there's a good, there's an interesting new idea there. Next up is Stephen Mandel at Lone Pine Capital and the new the new investments he's made is in uh, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. Obviously something to do with the chip shortages there. There's probably a play that he's going for. I don't know exactly what that is. This company has always been too hard for me to understand. Um, but anyway, he's made a quite a significant purchase into that plus a purchase into Facebook, so Meta platforms. I think um, with the valuation of Meta getting punished over the last sort of six months, um, there's probably gonna be a fair few super investors investing in Meta platforms in Q1. So I would assume they see value here because it's been a great company for a long time producing a lot of cash. So, okay, I get that one. Now turning to Monish Pabrai at Pabrai Investment Funds. now. No purchases here uh, of new companies or anything like that, but I think the biggest the biggest news out of this is his essentially full exit out of Seritage Growth Properties. Now, Seritage Growth he's had in there, I think since the pandemic, it was at like $40 a share, then it went down to like $6 a share or something like that. And look, he's probably come away with this with some sort of profit. I, I don't know how great that profit is. He might've doubled his money in that time, which is you know pr nothing to, you know, nothing to complain about. But he's obviously thinks that this is not a good investment anymore for whatever reason. Um, I, I will allow investing with Tom to analyze that and um, Brad Kellner to go through more of the details about this one and in terms of why Pabri might have sold out of this one. But yeah, there you go. It, it's it's he's he's completely exited that one. Next person I want to move to is Rob Benal at RV Capital. And I think the interesting play is now he had already had Kavana, I think, in his portfolio. He's just added a huge amount in Q1. Kavana's share price has actually been just getting hammered. I think it was 300. Now it's like in the 30s. It's That's like 90% fall or something insane. So um, yeah, Kavana is obviously is tripled down essentially in this investment. 
Um, that's that's pretty interesting. Now, this actually isn't Rob Bernal's entire portfolio because he this is just coming up on 13 Fs. Uh, he has actually, I know he has Ryman Healthcare, which is a New Zealand company. There will be, he definitely has Process. Um, there's companies here that he, uh, that are not showing up, but, uh, so this is not his full portfolio, but I think there's some very interesting companies here. Trepenion is something that I'm looking at a little bit closer at the moment. There's Facebook, Wix, Salesforce, Credit Acceptance Corp, all very, very good businesses in their own right with good management. So. This is a great place to get ideas, I think, from Rob Vinal. Now, with Short Spring Partners, this is Dennis Hong. I think he is a fantastic investor, and he has probably been getting punished the last six months. Some of these companies were really excelling, like C Limited in particular. That was that was killing it. It was up like 6x in, in a year and a half, and it has fallen from grace, just like a lot of the other high-flying stocks in that period have really come back to earth, and C Limited is no exception here. Uh, but he was able to add double down on his C-limited stake in Q1. Then he's got some new additions, and these are some really cool companies that I would love to do some more investigative work on too. So we've got Coupang, which is, I don't know how to pronounce this because it's a South Korean company. I'm probably butchering that that name. Uh, I would love to investigate that one a little bit further. It's an e-commerce play. I think it's a little bit like Alibaba. Then we've got Blend Labs Inc. Now, I don't know what Blend Labs Inc. is at all, so... That's straight into the research pile to see what's going on there and what that company is because uh, Dennis Hong doesn't make many investments as you can see by his portfolio here. Uh, so if he's got some conviction on one of these ideas, it's it's probably a good idea and I need to look into that. Now, last but not least is Michael Burry. And I think this is really interesting because he's obviously been sitting on a fair bit of cash. I think he sold out of a lot of stocks back in Q4 and it's, well, here we go. This is the things that he bought with this money. We've got Booking Holdings, Warner Brothers Discovery, with Alphabet, Signacorp, Meta Platforms, Oventive Inc, Nexstar Media Group. Now, some of these companies I'm not familiar with. Oventive and Nexstar Media Group. Don't know those at all. Uh, again, companies that we should put on our watch list and try to find a little bit more about. But we've got, you know, Meta Platforms, Alphabet, Warner Brothers Discovery, Booking Holdings, all companies I've looked at in some way before. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to see Michael Burry deciding that these are uh, very undervalued. He's a pretty old school value investor in my eyes. So if he sees, he thinks Booking Holdings in particular is probably the most interesting one here for me because Booking Holdings, I don't know how how they how they've been performing and how they're bouncing back after the pandemic. And maybe he thinks that they're going to bounce back really strongly and that uh, yeah, they're really undervalued. So. Might have to take another look at booking holdings anyway. Now, there obviously are a lot of other super investors that I haven't covered today, and I've just picked out the ones that I thought were interesting or had a new investment or something like that. I hope that distilled a lot of the um, all those super investors for you, and please go and check out some of your favorites anyway. Uh, if you want to if you want to invest in some of these companies, especially some of these international companies, I use Interactive Brokers as my um, broker of choice, so. There's a link in the description if you're interested in that. I also have an e-magazine that I'm putting out once a month, which has all my companies that I have on my watch list and their intrinsic values that I've calculated. And I update that each month. So if you want to keep up to date with the intrinsic values of about 40 companies that I'm following, please check out the e-magazine. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed the new scenery. I'll see you next time.